In this video, we'll investigate homogeneous systems with infinitely many solutions, and we'll answer the question, since we can't list infinitely many solutions, how do we write the solution set down? Let's approach this with an example. Here's a homogeneous system. Let's try to solve it. And just because it's homogeneous, we don't have any special solution techniques. We'll write down the augmented matrix. And we'll perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on it. And this is what we get. Now the leading entries of this matrix are here and here. So the pivot positions are there. And X corresponds to a pivot column and y corresponds to a pivot column. These two variables are basic, but z does not. z is free. So there are infinitely many solutions. Each row of a matrix, of an augmented matrix, corresponds to an equality. Let's look at these equalities. 1x, plus 2z equals 0, 1y equals 0, and 0 equals 0. What we're going to do is we're going to take our free variable, which is z, and everywhere it appears, we're going to move it to the right. In this particular example, it only appears once, but we'll move it to the right. And we don't have an equation, you'll notice, for our free variable. Our basic variable x equals something. Our basic variable y equals something. We don't have any equation for our free variable. We're going to create an equation. What can we say about Z? Well, it's certainly equal to itself. We create the equation for the free variable that the free variable equals itself. Y equals zero. Zero is zero times Z. And what's the point of doing that? It lets you write down the following, that the vector 
X, Y, Z equals the free variable Z times the vector negative two, zero, one. Z is free. It can be any real number. And every value of Z gives you a different solution. And because Z can be any real number, and there are infinitely many real numbers, this is storing infinitely many solutions. We've just seen a special case of a theorem. Suppose that a homogeneous system has three variables. Then we know it has infinitely many solutions. And just like over here, where our solution set was our free variable times a vector, if there's more than one free variable, our solution will look like a linear combination of terms of this form. So what our first free variable times some vector plus our second free variable time some vector and so on. And all of these free variables run over the real number line. So this could be any real number, this could be any real number, and so on.